Greetings, Goddess Body Mind Spirit Community. This is your Goddess Guru, Ia Omilade, here to share a word of inspiration to assist you on your path to self realization and self mastery. Um, this is November the 9th, and I wanted to share a video that is being inspired or share wisdom that's being inspired by someone who I've been in communication with who is moving past an addiction. Addictions um, are it's something that I like to talk about because I have dealt with my own addictions. Everyone, you know, has their own way of being addicted. My addictions have more to do with um, food and an OCD. Um, other people perhaps have been addicted to chemical substances such as, you know, drugs, alcohol, um, other people may have may be addicted to sex, um, but I think that sometimes people miss that they are addicted to emotions, that they are addicted to relationships, that they are addicted actually to their own thoughts and ways of being. And so this is a video that can help you move beyond anything that you feel is difficult for you to say no to. It's like you have to do that thing, okay? Um, and so one of the things that I wanted to talk about when we are moving past an addiction because that's what I'm more focused on. So first of all, let me just say what is an addiction? An addiction is anything that you do where you feel like you must do it. You can't say no to it. It has a hold on your life that um, is beyond what we feel to be control. And um, the other thing about an addiction, as I see it, is it's a relationship. An addiction is also a way of coping. Addiction typically is going to be covering up an emptiness. It'll be covering up some pain. It, it literally is a way of dealing with um, trauma, inner chaos, inner pain. Um, some people may have addictive personalities and so it may be easier for some people to get addicted. Um, you know, I remember using um, a personality system and one of the personalities is prone to addiction. This is this. this this way of this personality type likes thrills it likes to have fun it likes to like do things to get it high on life and so sometimes some people are sort of prone to addiction because they like that high feeling um, it, it's like what they seek but <laughs> if your addiction causes you to have problems in your life okay I don't care why you're addicted it's not good. You need to give it up. You need to get real with yourself about it. And of course, the first step to moving past an addiction is to admit that you even have an addiction. And one of the things that I think is important in moving past addiction is don't judge it. You know, if, if what you're doing is um, your way of coping, and oftentimes addiction is um, self-abuse. Now, who believe addiction will break relationships up. It will hurt people. It will cause families to suffer. It will cause relationships to suffer. Um, and, 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 you know, like I think about alcoholism. An alcoholic is just tearing himself, herself up with his alcohol. Um, but then the way it's tearing up the family is, you know, there's there's the, those holes in the relationship um, you're not fully engaged you know when you have that kind of addiction and it could just it might be messing up the money you can't keep a job you know it, it, it may be drinking the alcohol is tearing up you know that's that person's way of coping but it's also tearing up the relationships around it's creating problems in the person's life that actually is a great indicator of addiction and so 
if you have an OCD, which I feel OCDs are addictions. Um, I do believe people develop OCDs highly, you know, it's highly probable it's developed in response to a trauma. It's just, you know, you just develop this way of coping with the inner um, emotion and the inner, it's like an inner pain, chaos. And so you develop this OCD because it gives you some type of control and sort of helps to relieve that, you know, it takes the edge off of what you're feeling on the inside. Um, but I see it as an addiction. It is just, you know, something that you feel like you have to do and it is a way to cope with life. Typically, OCDs are not going to hurt people around us, but there is a level of disconnect. It's a level of you, you're only going to be able to engage so much in life it's a problem okay so addictions there's usually a problem so if you have a behavior a way of being addiction to relationships addiction to emotions addictions to food and it is causing a problem in your life it's tearing up your health it's messing with your relationships it's keeping you um, from being who and what you are fully then um, it's something that needs to be addressed. And so, um, one of the things we have to do often when we are moving past the addiction is we need a why. Why do I want to move past this addiction? Because addictions are relationships. <laughs> it, it is truly, you have a relationship with whatever that addiction is. And so, if you want to break up, with your addiction you have to have a big enough why because that addiction is going to be calling your name a lot of times you, people have an addiction and it's just like you just settle into you know how when you have a relationship with somebody uh, especially if it's a love relationship at first it's oh my gosh it feels so good that's how addiction is I always just feels so good and then you just settle into your way like when you first meet and fall for that person and it's just so good and then after a while you just sort of settle into your relationship and you just sort of have this way of being well if you decide I don't want to have this relationship anymore especially if it's been around for a little while it's going to cause some upheaval because now you've got to change the way you operate you're not in not settled into you you can't be settled into that way of operating anymore you've got to move beyond it you've got to find a new way you're going to be taking different turns and doing different things and you might get new friends and everything and so it requires you to become something new something different because you no longer are in that relationship you now are redefining yourself okay and so you have to but and if it's a relationship that you're sort of like okay with like you really could stay but you know sort of like well I just don't feel like I'm moving I'm growing in it you know and it's like you still have that special place in your heart for that person um, you, you, you might go through some things. You're going to feel some kind of way. It's like you're, you'll feel disjointed. You don't know what to do. That's what moving past an addiction is like because you're breaking up with whatever you're addicted to. And so it's like, okay, well, what do I do? If I'm not going to be addicted, what do I do? And so first and foremost, you have to have the why of why are you moving away from the addiction. And the greatest why could be... I don't want to live like that. It's tearing up my life. It's messing up my world. I'm not happy. I don't know if I've ever met a person who is happily addicted and they're telling the truth. Okay? Folks can say, I don't want to move past my addiction. I'm cool with that. Alright? You don't want to move past your addiction? It's fine with me. Alright? But don't tell me you are happy. No, you are settled in that addiction okay and so most people are not happy 
and they are having problems. It's creating issues. It's creating situations in their lives that it, it's, it's, a, it's a major problem. So somebody, for instance, who might have food addiction, if they are walking around overweight, um, cholesterol might be off, knees might be hurting, every time you turn around you gotta buy something new or you don't have anything to wear and then you're frustrated and it just creates this emotional upheaval because you're like I don't know what to do I just need this food to help me cope you know but it's having an impact on your health you know and so you have to start just getting real with yourself about for real this is no good and it's no different from breaking up with the beloved that you're like, this relationship is not for me. It's time to move on. And so there's the upheaval that will happen and, um, and, 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 and the addiction will be the one in the relationship who is saying, why are you breaking up with me? Don't leave me. We're good together. But that addiction will be calling you. But what you have to understand that if you want to move past the addiction, if you want the addiction to lose power over your life, then you have to disengage it. You can't you can't just do a little bit of your addiction. You just have to go full on whatever you have to do. I will not engage this addiction. Even if you find that you are engaging it less then you just keep working to engage it even less. You just keep retching it down. Because sometimes you can't go from 100 to 0. Some people do. They have to just give it up 100%. Turn your back on it. You've got to leave it alone. Some people will say, I will do less and less and less and less. That will cause it to lose power because if you're doing less, then there's going to be one or two times when you're like, okay, typically I would engage my addiction right now, but I'm not going to engage my addiction right now. I'm just saying no. And, and so that even will help it to lose power. If you want something to lose power over you, you have to say, I'm not going there with you. I'm not going to engage you. I'm not going to use you. This is over. And then you have to find something else to do. You can't take away the addiction without putting something else there. And so I look at addiction as a pathway to self-realization, to self-mastery, and to a greater relationship, to the great divine consciousness, to the divine laws of the universe. And so um, for some people, this is their path to enlightenment. I can say as someone who's dealt with addictions, it's not a fun path. If you can avoid it, avoid it. Um, if you know someone who is on the path of addiction, you know, it's like you can't judge them. Because <laughs> you never know. If they decide to make it to the other side of this thing, they will be amazing. Um, and so, um, that's what I want to say about addictions. The, the, the key, the key to letting the addiction go is to have a big enough why and then you can't engage the addiction. When that thing is calling you like, why are you leaving me? We're so good together. You know how I help you feel better when you get stressed or when you feel sad or when you feel nervous. You know I'm there for you. We had a good thing going. Why are you giving me up? And you just have to. There's a movie I watched one time called The Beautiful Mind. And it really illustrated for me how to the power of saying no I'm sorry if I'm giving it away to you but it's still worth it to watch it if you haven't watched it but this man uh, he's a great mathematician I can't think of his name Nash is his last name I think um, 
he's brilliant, but he has a um, uh, mental illness. He's um, schizophrenic. And the medicine, the mental health institution, they were rendering him helpless. He was on medication. Now, his addiction had gotten way bad out of control. Um, he needed to do some... Okay, wait a minute. I said his addiction. His schizophrenia had gotten way out of control. And so, it was creating a negative impact in his life in a very significant way. Um, and so, he needed to do something about it. They did a lobotomy on him. I mean, it, it, it was just really, really sad that he became so not himself. Um, trying to go through the medical, the mental health system. And so he told his wife, look, I'm going to beat this thing. So, you know, when people have um, schizophrenia, they have folks talking to them. He could see them and everything. He had a relationship with these people in his mind that no one else could see. And these people were like, they were causing him to do stuff that it was just crazy um his life was hell basically the way he moved past his schizophrenia is when they ran up talking to him like why are you not talking to me and we've got to do this and we've got to do that he just turned and walked away after a while they stopped talking to him but they would just stand and look at them look at him he would see him and just turn and walk away at first, they're yelling and screaming. Finally, when he would not respond, he would not engage them. And these people were, he had a serious relationship with them. Um, they finally stopped talking to him because he just would not, he would not talk to them. And then they just would stand and look at him. And he would just walk away. So now had he said, okay, tell me, what, what do you want? It would, he would have gone back to square one, right? It got to a point where he didn't even see them again. But guess what? They would show up every now and again. He won a major honor. And there they were. I mean, probably 40, 50 years down the road. They were still there in the background. Willing to show up and get his schizophrenia going again. It shows the power of the mind. It shows the power that lies within the human spirit to move beyond something that seems like you can't do it. To let go of a relationship that is addictive, problematic, and it feels like this thing has complete and utter control. We can move past it. You just have to... Just let it go. You, just have, you have to make it up in your mind. And then you have to replace it with something. Now, that's what I forgot to mention. So you have to replace it with know thyself. Because we don't want to replace one addiction with a, one negative addiction with another one, right? We want to replace it with something new that will help us grow, that will help us develop. develop. And so healing yourself, healing the trauma, um, knowing the truth of who and what you are, going on a spiritual journey searching for you know your identity picking up new habits new behaviors so perhaps you start exercising um, perhaps you start reading inspirational works sometimes on the way to getting healthier we may substitute real quick with something that's not so good but it's not as bad as the addiction but it's all about self-awareness and realizing oh wait a minute the new one is becoming a problem too Moving on to the next thing that's better. It's all about moving to a higher level of health and well-being. And so, I just wanted to share this in case other people are dealing with addiction. Like someone who is talking to me is. Um, in hopes that it will assist you with understanding how it is in fact possible. If you are addicted to a relationship... <laughs> You just got to do the same thing. A, a, a relationship addiction is something I think people don't all the time get. But our minds, and this is 
for anything. Our minds create pathways based on what we're thinking and doing. And so the more we create a pathway that is about a relationship with another person, it could be a love relationship, it could be a friendship, it could be a familial, where you know it's blood relative type relationship. Um, it, it could be any kind of relationship where we have an addiction to that relationship. It creates a pathway in our mind and you just feel like I can't not deal with this person. I can't not be with this person. I can't not engage this person. Even though it will may be one of the most horrible relationships ever. It's no good. You know it's no good. It's not good for you. It's not good for the other person. But you all are just doing it. You need to do something about that. You need to accept its relationship addiction. And the way you are going to move beyond it is create a new neural network, a new pathway in your brain. And so you start shifting your attention. No matter how much your mind goes back to that person, you'll find yourself talking about that person. No matter how much you just feel like, oh, I just really want to call. I want to talk to this person. I want to engage and be with this person or whatever it is that we do. Don't do it. If you really want to move away from it, you have to, you have to just back away. Shift completely as much as you can. If you can just walk away completely, do that. But start shifting yourself to creating, how about this? A relationship with yourself. Huh? <laughs> how about that? Because a lot of times when we have addictions, it's because I don't, we don't have a good relationship with self. Okay? So how about you start creating a relationship with you instead of you know, trying to have a relationship with yourself through someone else. Just go straight to the source. Develop a relationship with you. Develop a relationship with something positive that enhances your life. Okay. And the other thing, one last thing that I think people don't all the time get, and it sort of goes back to something I mentioned earlier. What's in you that leads you, especially people who have this high addiction way of being, what is really in you that makes you constantly have to shift from one addiction to the next? At some point you have to admit, you know what, I'm high strung, so maybe I need to exercise more or I need a job that, um, you know, challenges me, works my brain, helps me to you know, just really be highly engaged in doing something positive and pr productive. Okay, so now that makes me think about how many people are addicted to work. But perhaps you're addicted to work because you're running away from really engaging your life and, you know, the problems. You don't want to fix something else. You know, a lot of times that's what addiction is about. We don't really, we don't really want to deal with something. So I'm not talking about work addiction. I'm just saying you need to find things to do. Stop being so uh, d d being that addictive way of being doesn't have to be your MO. Okay? You 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 got to fix that because it doesn't always have to be and if unless you know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. If if this is you, you know who who you are because you jump from one addiction and it is just in different ways. You might go to being a telemarketer and next thing you know you're just running your mouth about your telemarketing. Now I love telemarketing companies. Don't get me wrong. I'm a part of them. But I've seen people in telemarketing and I'm like you know what? I think they have an addictive personality because they this is like their fifth network marketing company. Every time you turn around they're going on and on and on about a new company um, and at some point you just got to settle in with one company. You know work your business. But it, 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 it's not even about working a business. It's about they just have this addictive way of being and they're just intense and just constantly latching on to something. Constantly latching on to something. And, and, and it's never real deep. So there we go. I'm just going to let it go with that. Um, I, if you are struggling with addiction and you're watching this video, my heart goes out to you. It is possible to move past addiction. Uh, we can either accept that we're powerful beyond measure 
or we can believe that something can have a, a hold on us that we can't overcome. I say bull crap. Is my one of my old teachers used to say bull hockey. <laughs> you can do it if you want to. It may take a while, but if you want to move past your addiction, do it. All right. It's too many people have done it and never gone back to their addiction. That you just need to find them and let them inspire you. So, but my heart does go out to you. It's no fun. And um, I send you light. I send you love. And I send healing energy your way. Blessings of the goddess be upon you and yours. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you are in need of divination or reading to assist you on your path, whether you have an addiction or not, um, please go to the link below. You can find um, the part of my website that is about spiritual readings and look at the kind that I offer. And you can th the instructions for requesting a reading are there on that page. So have a wonderful day. Thank you all so much. And I wish you well. Peace.